Right, so with a bit of luck, uh, I'm back, and all of you are. Um, sorry about that. As I say, I'm quite new to this tech to um, get several things on the screen at um, once. So, um, hopefully if you're all there, uh, what you can um, see is... Uh, hi, Miriam, welcome back. Uh, sorry about that. Now, with a bit of luck, what you can see on the screen is my cursor moving around and uh, hopefully you can see uh, what is I'm clicking on here, which is um, Adobe Lightroom. Um, if you can see that, um, just send me a message so I know that we're all on the right track here, which would be great. And um, what we'll do is we'll do a little bit of online photo editing. editing. So I hope you can see um, some pictures of Alex, Kate, a clock, and um, a sort of water fountain as well on your screen. You won't better see me because the camera is off. Okay, so <clears throat> um, hopefully you can see the screen and you can hear me. So let's move into uh, Lightroom here. Okay, so what I've got here is Lightroom. I'm just going to move this over into the um, middle of the screen here a little bit so it's what you'll better see and this is um, probably the most well used photo editing um, software that um, people use today it's very popular with photographers both amateurs and um, uh, professionals but there are lots of different types of editing uh, software though Adobe Lightroom is one of the sort of standards there's also capture one and such like this software isn't free, it isn't cheap. You can have a trial basis of it. Um, but on most of your <coughs> computers, uh, you will have some editing software built into your computer and it all tends to work in the same way. If not, if you uh, Google free uh, online photo editing software, you'll get a list of some uh, editing software that you can uh, use either online or download um, for your photographs. Okay, so let's go back to this one now. And here are some pictures that I took this afternoon. We've got a couple of pictures of Alex, uh, the clock in the vic uh, vicarage, two portrait pictures of Kate, a uh, couple of the pump, some of the cross, and some of a tree. And what I want to do is to just show you how we go about editing pictures. So first of all, the first picture I'm gonna take is um, one of these of the pump okay so i'm going to go up to develop and uh, what you should be able to see now with a bit of luck is one big photograph of this pump this is what goes into our little pond in the vicarage now <clears throat> if you remember what we're doing is black and white photography so i took this on a color it's a color digital uh, picture so the first thing i need to do is to turn this to black and white and in the editing settings over here, as I move my little cursor over, um, it says here treatment, colour and black and white. All I have to do is just click on black and white there and that's immediately turned it into black and white. If I also click on these little squares here, what it gives me is various um, options. So I'm going to use what I call Acros red now that's basically Acros is a type of black and white film so this is the computer simulating that and r means uh, a red faces so i've chosen that and now i've closed down that so basically what i've got there <coughs> is a black and white photograph now i could just leave it like that um, if i wanted to um, but actually, that would be an unedited photograph, apart from the fact that we've turned it from colour uh, to black and white. But what we need to do now is some basic editing. And if you can see my cursor here, that's the photograph. I'm moving over to the side here, where there's these lots of these controls here. We're not going to use all of them, but we're going to use some of the basic ones. <clears throat> and the two that we find to begin with are exposure and contrast. Okay. Now, if I grab this little arrow here, exposure controls the amount of light um, that we use in that particular shot. So if I move it down, the picture will go very dark. If I move it up, it will get brighter. 
So if I click it on zero again, that's roughly where it was. Now looking at this picture here, what we've got is up the top corner here, the top of the pump is quite dark, but down here where the log is and the water is, it's quite burnt out. So if I move the slider down a little bit, um, that has brought in some of the detail of the log, but what we're losing is in the detail at the top of the pump. Okay, but I'm going to show you how we can do that in different bits in a moment. Now contrast, <clears throat> when you used to do black and white photography and you used to do black and white prints, you used to use what was called multi-graded paper. And that was your contrast and it went from grade one to grade five. But we've got a little slider here and again if I go down to minus it sort of makes the picture look a bit more milky and that means that the blacks are there's less definition to the black areas the shadow areas but if i go back to zero and if i slide it the other way to add contrast what happens is can you see it's making the darker areas go darker so you get a higher contrast okay so that's the two main elements to um, editing your photographs firstly exposure less light or more light and contrast less contrast which makes the picture more milky brings out the uh, detail in the blacks or more contrast which makes it very much more black and white as you can see so there's less tonal different difference between um, the greys and such like okay but what we've got here is a picture where the top part of the photograph is quite dark and the bottom part here is quite light so we need to treat these two sections separately and what you can often do on most editing software is you can use a brush tool so if I go up here I've got these tools here a little square a circle with an arrow uh, a circle with a red dot a uh, rectangle and uh, another circle and this thing which is a brush so if I click on the brush, what I then get is this tool that has come up. It's got a plus sign in it. And what I'm going to do is where the um, area is quite bright, I'm going to start brushing. OK, now at the moment, it seems like nothing is happening. But that's because the area that I'm brushing is just it's just got a little bit lighter now I finished brushing so again on the exposure what I can do is if I turn that right down you'll see the area that I've used the brush on in fact look I've missed a bit there so I have turned that right down because what I'm just wanting to do is to brush in that area there which was what was quite light okay now we don't want to leave it like that so I'm just going to move the exposure dial up until I'm sort of happy with that and we've got the detail and I think that's probably about right there like that so we've got some nice detail in the um, some nice detail in the wood there and the uh, plants and such like if I click on that it brings it up so you can see we've managed to keep the detail there uh, in the picture um, and the exposure is about correct now what we've also got up here, as I say, this is quite dark, so we need to adjust this. And the easiest way to do this is to use what they call a graduated filter. And if I come up to this line of controls here, if I click on here, I can then pull this down till it gets to about halfway. And what I can do again is just adjust the exposure in that section, okay? So I've done that. So this has now brought this pump up a bit. But this area here where there's a, uh, what's left of a statue of St. Francis, I need to deal with that. So I'm going to go back to the brush tool and I'm going to just brush that area again here. I'm just marking over there and you can see what's happening because if I move it down a bit, there we go. That's just starting to make sure that the background there is a bit darker than the foreground if we just move that brush you can adjust the side adjusting the size of the brush like that so we just get the pump in okay so that's sorted out the 
um, level of exposure across the picture. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come back to the contrast and I'm just going to give it a touch more contrast. If you can see that just brightens up the little picture a little bit. And that's pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. Now the other four sliders here as we go down, we've got highlights, shadows, whites and blacks. So the highlights will affect the white areas. So if I move that, you can see the white going up and down. So we're going to put that to about there. That's minus 20. Shadows, as it says, will bring out the shadow areas. Well, we don't. We want to sort of keep the shadows down a bit in the background. So I'm going to keep that to just plus four. Um, whites, again, a bit like the highlights, that will just reduce those. And blacks will just bring in some nice blacks into the, uh, into the picture. So that's what those four sliders do. Now, the other thing that you'll often have in your, um, oh, hi, Andrea. The other thing you'll often have in your editing software is um, what they are called texture or clarity or dehaze. Now, I'm not going to worry about texture or dehaze, but the clarity, you've even got this on your um, mobile phone. It's sometimes called structure on uh, your mobile phone. If I adjust this slider, if I go minus, it makes it look like the picture's sort of going out of focus. It's gone sort of quite hazy. But if I go the other way, if I go back to zero and add clarity, it just, it seems like it's sharpening it up a bit, if you see, it's just giving it a little bit more sharpness. So if I put that about 32, I think that's probably about right. So there, I don't think we need to do anything else to that particular photograph. Um, we've turned it into black and white. We've adjusted the exposure a little bit. We've added some contrast. We've dealt with the shadow area that was up the top. And we've dealt with the highlighted area that was blown out down the bottom. So now the tones, the tones of grey in the photograph are far more even across the board. So I'm quite happy um, with that. So let's look at another picture. Um, let's go to Mrs. Vicarage here, um, Kate, who was my model um, this afternoon. So I'm going to click on this one. So here she is. This is a portrait picture. Now, um, first thing I need to do again is to um, change this uh, to black and white. So I go over here to my list of controls. As you can see, it's got color and black and white. So I'm just going to click on black and white. And that's changed it straight away to black and white but on my computer here I've got a lot of options and again what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to black and white but I'm going to use instead of red which gives a harsh sort of tone for portraits you often use a yellow or a green filter so I'm going to use a yellow filter this would be like taking a photograph with black and white film in a camera and putting a yellow filter on the lens and as you can see hopefully it's made Kate's complexion uh, look much nicer, uh, which is very important in portraits because you want them to be um, flattering. Now, coming back to these controls again that we used earlier, starting with exposure, Kate's standing in front of the windows in our porchway here, so she's getting some nice natural light. Over this side of her face, it's quite bright, and over here, there's quite a lot of shadows. And if I move the exposure up and down, you can see if I go down, the shadows increase, or if I go up, it goes, it gets a bit blown out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to increase it a little, just a fraction. Uh, let's just see. Just going to increase that a little bit. So that's plus 0.20, just a tiny little bit. Now, contrast with portraits, if I move this dial, you'll see it goes quite milky or it gets quite harsh. Now, particularly when you're photographing ladies, what you don't want is sort of um, a very harsh picture that brings out all of the wrinkles. People don't like that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to leave the contrast where it is because that's, um, that's fine. But I'm going to come down to the highlights here and I'm just going to adjust that a little bit because on this side of Kate's face, this side here, it's quite bright and we're losing some of the detail. So I'm just going to reduce the highlights a little bit. 
shadows, which is on this side, I'm just going to bring up a little bit because we don't want too much shadow. And um, whites, I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. Blacks, we don't need too much. Okay, so that's a very basic edit of a portrait, but I think there's still more I can do here. Because if I showed this to Kate, she's not going to like the wrinkles around her eyes or just on her cheeks here. So what we do is we go back down to clarity, which we used earlier, if you remember. Now, if that's right, this is down here. If I turn that right up, it will make all the wrinkles and blemishes even worse. So we don't want to do that. But if I start to move it down, it's actually improved things quite a bit. Bit. Okay, um, so just going to turn the clarity down and that's sort of nice and soft. Now there is another setting down here which is sharpness. If I go all the way down the bottom and uh, let me just find it, here we are sharpening. So I can turn that down a bit as well. So I've reduced the sharpening altogether and that's given a nice glow to that portrait of Kate and just check the exposure a little bit more. But there is a bit more I can do and um, photographers do a thing called retouching where we just remove any blemishes that are there and make the picture as nice as possible. And there's two areas I'm gonna work on. This area around Kate's eyes and just on her cheek here, just to make her look as glamorous as possible. So to do this, I'm gonna go back and I'm going to use this brush again and what I'm doing here is I'm just brushing this area you can just see it getting slightly whiter but I'm just brushing this area here and uh, what I'm going to do now is just make sure the exposure is correct on that we don't want it to we don't want it to stand out Ooh, like that so just gonna make that make sure that's correct but what I'm going to do is just there, I'm going to get the clarity and I'm just going to turn that right down like that. If you can see the wrinkles disappearing there a bit and sharpness, I'm going to do the same thing on the sharpness there. So hopefully the wrinkles there have nearly, nearly disappeared. Let's just get the picture back up to full size again. There we go. I think that's looking a lot better. And going to do the same here on Kate's cheek. I'm going to get my magic brush and I'm just going to go around this area here where there's a few wrinkles there. Now what you don't want to do is to take all of them away because otherwise you get these sort of pictures sometimes that you look in magazines and everybody looks absolutely fake. It, they just look painted and people really don't look like that. And there's nothing wrong with wrinkles. In fact, I think all of Mrs. Vicarage's wrinkles are very beautiful. But actually, it's just about in just doing some slight editing to make the picture look a little bit better. And then, uh, but not taking away, in a sense, the story that the person's face says. So again, I'm going to go to clarity. I'm going to reduce that down. And in that area, I'm just going to reduce the sharpness again and let's have a look how that's looking let's just go back there we go i think that's looking a lot better and um i think um uh kate mrs vicarage will be a bit happier with that we haven't lost all of the wrinkles around the eye because if we got rid of all of them it would look a bit odd the picture would look a bit odd um, but what i do want to do is just finally this area here under her neck there's a lot of shadowing there um the rule is when you were photographing, when you're doing portraits of people with men, if you're photographing a, a, a chap, it's good to have lots of dark shadows to sort of, so you get this sort of chiseled look. But with ladies, the rule is often you want to avoid lots of harsh shadows. So I'm just going to do something about the shadows here uh, under Kate's chin. So I'm just going to make the picture a little bit bigger again. Just have a closer look at that. Let's just go back out. I'm going to get my brush tool. And I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the exposure right down so I can see where I'm brushing here. Okay, so we just can see where we're brushing there like that. 
and we're not obviously not going to keep it like that but I'm going to go back to the exposure now and I'm just going to bring out those shadows a little bit and then I'm going to do the same thing on the shadows there I think we probably need to do a little bit more up there like that it's just gone a little bit too much there and that's a little bit better I think we've got rid of some of those we've got rid of some of those shadows there now okay so that's just a very basic um, edit of a portrait and um, uh, I think that sort of improved that a little bit now there's one other control here that we haven't used so far which we'll use in the final picture I'm going to show but I'm just going to use it a little bit in this photograph and that's called cropping and that's this uh, if you go over here you see the square here if I click on this it does this to the picture and this allows me to move to crop the photograph to make it a bit smaller so in the background we've got my hat so that's just causing a bit of distraction so I'm going to crop the picture down there a little bit and I'm also going to crop the picture in a little bit so we are just focusing on Kate's face rather than what's in this distracting background so that's how I've cropped it if I click done there we go, <clears throat> that's cropped the picture and um, I think that's not too bad. Now one of the final things I can do is um, in portraits the important thing is to make sure the eyes are sharp and if you look <coughs> they're not particularly sharp here because I've been messing around with it so what we need to do maybe is to sharpen up the eyes and what I can do is I can use this tool here, makes the picture look a bit scary at this moment but what I'm doing is I'm just working out where the eyes are. So we're just doing that one there. I'm going to put the exposure back to normal. But what I'm going to do is this time I'm going to do the opposite of getting rid of the wrinkles. I'm just going to increase the clarity a little bit and the sharpness a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is make an exact copy of that. I'm going to move it over to there. And as you can see, that's already done that with Kate's eye there. So it's just sharpened it a little bit. Just going to drop the exposure down a bit, up a bit, so it's not looking too odd. That's done. Now if I go back to, there we go. So it's just brought a little bit of sharpness into Kate's eyes. You could adjust that um, a bit more. So it just looks a little bit more natural. Um, let's just go back to doing that. I can click on that. Uh, it's probably just a little bit too much there, I think. Uh, there we go, sort the exposure out a little bit, that's probably a bit better, let's have a look at that, yeah that's a bit better. So there we go, so that's a uh, portrait that's done, hi Nigel again, uh, hi Annette, um, so that's Kate's portrait, I could do a few other things with that just to get it uh, better but hopefully in a sense that gives you some idea of editing a, a portrait. So let's go back to the library and uh, let's have a look at um, a final picture now uh, which I think let's have a look at this picture of the church um, with the cross let's do this one okay so I'm going to click on this and I'm going to open it up again into the develop section and here we go we've got the <coughs> cross that I put up in the lawn for Easter Sunday with a white scarf and St Mary's Church in the background. In fact, I took two of these, um, so I can actually just toggle between them and see which one I like. So we'll deal with that one. Now again, the first thing I want to do is turn this to a black and white photograph. So I'm gonna go over here again to these controls where it says color and black and white, and I'm gonna click on black and white, and that's turned it straight into black and white. And as I say, I've got all sorts of things I can select but I'm going to go back down to the red filter now this works well you can see the different filters that's standard if you watch the picture it will change slightly so that's a standard black and white that's with a green filter that's with a red filter if you look at the sky the sky is becoming more pronounced that's with a yellow filter okay and that's just monochrome so I'm going to choose the red filter because uh, that works well with the sky okay so that's the first edit now this picture's all really quite nicely exposed but there are a few things I think we need to sort out so first of all as you can see what I've had to use is some wood and a, a, a stone block to hold the cross up 
and I think that makes the picture look a bit untidy. So I'm going to go back to that crop, uh, which is up here. I'm going to click on that, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to crop the picture out so we've just got the cross like that, okay? So that's got rid of that untidiness down the bottom, I think, which has worked quite well. The other thing I need to do is to make sure that the picture's straight because when you take a photograph, if I go on that, I can move the picture like this, you see. When you take a picture, it might not necessarily um, be straight. So you need to make sure the picture's straight. Um, there's a wonderful thing that will do this automatically for me. So there we go, that's made sure the picture is straight. Now, there's a few other things here I think I can improve on. We've got some nasty shadows in this tree, in this bush that's up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deal with that shadow area. And going back up here, I've got this brush tool which I used, or this circle tool. So I'm going to use the circle tool, and that will draw me a circle like this. And that is what I'm going to do is make sure that's just roughly on the bush there like that. And then what I can do is just change the exposure in that circle. So if I start to move the exposure up now, what we're starting to do is get a little bit more detail in that bush. If I just move the shadows up a bit, there we go. That's worked much better. OK, so that's done. So that's improved that. And also here on the church tower on that side, we could do with dealing with that. So I'm just going to click on that circle again. I'm going to come over to the church tower, just drawing that sort of circle there, just going to pull it down a little bit. And what we're going to do is just move the exposure button so the church tower comes out um, a bit more. There we go. So that's not too bad. <clears throat> and um, going back to the crop again, I think what I can do is bring in the sides a little bit more like this so we've just got the cross a bit more like that there we go and that's not too bad so um, there's not really much more that we can do to that uh, if I go up to the exposure that's correct we could in introduce a little bit more contrast like so probably plus 33 again and I think we don't need any more clarity because that will make the picture go a bit uh, a bit funny so because it was a, a very bright uh, afternoon when I took that. Um, so uh, that there I think is okay. So uh, if we go to library, um, we've got our three pictures. Let's see if I can just put them in some sort of order. Uh, if I move that one up to there, and then that one up to, uh, that was the one we did first, that one to there, we can just have a look at our three pictures that we've edited. So the first one was the little fountain there. The second one we did was uh, Kate, Mrs. Vicarage, the portrait. And the third one there was um, the cross. So it's great to play around with these. I'm just going to show you one more thing which I think is quite cool. And if I go back to my library, I'm going to take this picture of this tree here down the bottom. I'm going to put it in develop. <coughs> but instead of using um, the controls here on this side, I'm coming over to the other side. Now, if you're used to using um, uh, Facebook and Instagram and such like, what you often have are different presets. So you can, um, rather than have to do all the adjustments individually, you can actually start to um, do adjustments um, just by the click of a button. And uh, I've got lots here. Uh, so if I go to Decay, I can start to do weird things to the picture here as I scroll down. Lots of different things will happen. But what we want is the black and white one. So I've got black and white, contrast 1, contrast 2, contrast 3, contrast uh, 8 there, contrast 9. Um, there's that one I can click on as well. And you can do all sorts of things. And I've created some of my own. So let's go down here. And I'll show you some of the weirder ones that I've created. Um, so this is what I call Italy black and white. That was for street scenes in Italy. But I want to go to, if I can just find it, Ship's Graveyard black and white. So let's just find this one here. Uh, there 
there we are. So I'm going to use this one here, which is street photography, black and white. So that goes from color. If I click on that, you can see that it's just created a, a particular kind of atmosphere with that tree. That's, that's quite good. I just probably need to bring the exposure up a little bit more. And actually, that has saved me the job of dealing with all of these other controllers here because I've created what's called a preset and I can just instantly click on that and it's given me um, the black and white picture how I would like it so that makes life um, a lot simpler. So let's just have a quick look again at those um, pictures. So the first one was the fountain, the second one was Kate we then did that one there, I'll just put that in slightly the wrong order, and then the cross. So um, that was um, how to uh, edit um, black and white um, uh, photographs. Uh, what we're going to do is, um, what I'd like you to do, if I just click on this, this will probably bring the uh, camera back in. Uh, done there we go uh, brilliant okay so do have a go at playing around with editing your pictures either on the computer if you've got access to a computer if your parents have some photo editing um, software on their computer or if you google um, free photo editing software some will come down please do this with your parents though um, don't google photo editing software um, without them knowing because you might end up um, paying for something that you don't want but also if you've got a mobile phone uh, then uh, all mobile phones have editing software built in and you can take a picture on your mobile phone and then normally touch the photograph and click on edit and that will give you um, that will give you a set of editing controls which are very similar to um, very similar to what we've just used and play around with the different settings <clears throat> experiment as much as you can and then when you've got things the way that you like it you can save that photograph or um, print it up um, but what I'd like you to do now is to start sending when you've had a good play around and edited your photographs and you've chosen your six black and white photographs if you email them to me at this address which I'll put up again it's Canon Rick at iCloud.com. Um, uh, there we go. I will uh, get them uh, up on the, the website, the web page I've sorted out. It is on the Scout site. Let me just get that page for you um, again. Uh, let me just find it. Uh, LRPS. There we go. So, so I'm just going on to a different page. Uh, there we are. Copy. I'll come back to you now. So this is the gallery. Ooh, this is the gallery where the photographs will go up. So you can see that we've had Leela's pictures already. I was really pleased with the pictures Leela did. Um, she took some lovely photographs of her dog. Um, and I thought what was clever is that the way she did it was to not just take a, a big picture of the dog. She took pictures of her paws, the dog's nose and everything. That was quite interesting. She also did a picture of a bee and a, a large daisy. And I, my favourite really was the large daisy. I thought that was great. So I look forward to um, seeing, receiving some of your pictures via email. And as soon as I've got them, I will then put them onto our um, gallery where everybody um, can see them. So thank you very much for uh, listening to the editing tutorial. I'm sorry I can't get my um, my own face back. Uh, <laughs> e uh, even I've got um, uh, limits to understanding the tech, but there we go. Um, so I hope you have a good evening and I hope you enjoy um, playing around with some editing software either on your phone or on a computer and I look forward to receiving your pictures uh, in due course and then when we've had a look at all of the pictures that have been in we will arrange to get your photo badges um, to you. Um, so 